Yes, good evening, brothers and sisters. I was caught between two ways as how to deal with this particular subject tonight, as to whether we do a potted history of uh, Hezekiah and all the things that he did, which are well documented and are there for us to read. We read it once a year in our daily readings, uh, and we very often have a Bible class upon uh, uh, that uh, reformation that uh, Hezekiah brought about uh, in the, in the uh, in the country of Judah, uh, or to deal with Hezekiah himself uh, and see what made Hezekiah what he was, uh, to see why Hezekiah decided at a very young age that he was the one that was going to bring about this reformation uh, and what the influences in Hezekiah's life were that made him bring about this reformation and to know that he was the man to do it. Uh, and so at a very young age we are told um, that uh, Hezekiah had planned um, to bring about this, uh, this great reformation. Uh, and we started to read about uh, Hezekiah's mindset here in uh, Second of Chronicles chapter 29. Now when we read the record in the book of Kings, uh, the uh, compiler of the book of Kings only uses one verse to sum up uh, this reformation of uh, Hezekiah, uh, and yet uh, the writer of the Chronicles, whoever the two people were, whether they were different people or not, uh, uses three or four chapters to sum up the uh, Reformation of, uh, of uh, Hezekiah. So what I want to do tonight is just have a look at Hezekiah himself and see what his influences were, who his friends were, uh, what his mindset was, uh, and see if we can learn something from the, the focus that uh, Hezekiah had on doing what he uh, wanted to do for his God uh, and, for, uh, and for his people. Now, we all need friends, don't we? And we all are influenced by someone or something. Uh, sometimes that influence comes very early on in our lives and sometimes it comes later in our lives. Uh, but there are things within our lives that have influenced to do the things that we do and become the people that we are. And uh, we can see a, a number of young people here, uh, and we know that at one time we were all young people, uh, and we were all influenced by those friends that we chose and those men and women that we came in contact with. Now, for most of us, those men and women that we came in contact with were brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of us have been privileged to have parents that have uh, uh, been also uh, influenced by the things of the truth uh, and have followed in the footsteps of um, the Lord Jesus Christ. And for some of us, we can see within our family tree some of those people that influenced us. Now, when we take on board Hezekiah's family tree, for instance, uh, we see that uh, um, his immediate family were of no use to him whatsoever. Uh, his father Ahaz, for instance, was, it is recorded of him, um, Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. And then we go back to his grandfather, who may have been one of the influences, um, to Jotham, and we read of Jotham, so Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Second of uh, Chronicles chapter 27 and verse 7. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars and his ways, though are they not written in the book of the kings of <coughs> Judah. And then we go a step further back and we come to that uh, King Isaiah, uh, which is, and his, his uh, history is recorded for us in chapter 26, and we read of, of Isaiah that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah did. Now when, I'm sure you're the same as me, when we come to try and uh, uh, focus our minds upon the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah, um, we get in an awful tangle about uh, who is where and what is what, um, and then just as we think we've got it all sorted out, we find that one of them has had his name changed. 
uh, and, uh, and he's uh, in the list as well. So it's difficult sometimes to work out where and when some of these kings fitted in. But we can be sure uh, that as far as uh, Hezekiah was concerned, he would have been influenced by his grandfather, uh, his grandfather uh, Jotham, who uh, did that which was right uh, in the sight of the Lord. Now he couldn't have got any of his influences for his godly ways from his uh, father Ahaz, but he may very well have got it from his mother, who was Abijah, or Abi, as she is also called. And she was the daughter of Zechariah. Now, I can find no history at all about this particular Zechariah. But Zechariah seems to have a sort of a priestly name with it, doesn't it? So maybe um, Abi's father was of a priestly family. And perhaps uh, uh, he got some of his influence from, uh, from this man, Zechariah. Uh, now, of course, uh, uh, Hezekiah was not the first son of, um, uh, of uh, Ahaz. And if we just turn back a few pages to the 28th chapter uh, of Second of Chronicles, um, very few of the other sons of Hezekiah are known to us by name. And the reason for that is, in verse 3 of chapter 28, we are told that Ahaz um, burnt incenses in the valley of the son of Hinnon and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. So his godly, his godly influences couldn't have come from his, from his father. Um, the, 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 the contrast would have been there, wouldn't it, that Ahaz would have been trying to influence this son that he had, uh, who had been protected in some way from being burnt in the fire, like his brothers, and maybe his sisters, but I don't think they burnt the girls, they only burnt the boys uh, for, some, for some reason. Um, how, how was he protected from being burnt uh, in the fire in the valley uh, of, uh, of Hidden? Uh, so how did, how did Hezekiah escape uh, from, from his father? Well, um, Brother uh, Harry Whitaker has um, uh, quite a few chapters in, in his uh, book on this particular subject. Um, and um, it was from the protection of his mother, Abai, uh, who protected him from his father, and maybe one of his strongest influences was from the prophet Isaiah, uh, who seems to have had uh, dealings with uh, many of the kings of this particular time. And if we go over to the first chapter of uh, um, Isaiah, we read there that uh, Isaiah prophesied within the reigns of verse 1 of chapter 1, um, the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. So this this prophet may have been of great influence in the uh, in the life of um, uh, Hezekiah. Now I tried to work out the dates too when uh, when Hezekiah actually reigned, but every chronology you look at give us a different date. Uh, and so I'm going to say that it was sometime between 715 BC and 697 BC, and that's as close as we as we can get. Um, two of our own uh, um, uh, commentators use the uh, 726 to 697 um, as the, as this particular period, and it all hinges apparently upon the time that Sennacherib came and uh, overthrew Samaria. And if we can date that particular date, then we can work out uh, the correct dating for this uh, uh, period of time. So what influence did Isaiah have upon this young man, uh, Hezekiah? Well, let's go over to the book of Isaiah, chapter 7. <clears throat> and here we have... Uh, Isaiah prophesying to Hezekiah's father, Ahaz. And Hezekiah's father at this particular time was worried by two kings 
uh, that were uh, uh, giving Judah a lot of uh, difficulty. Resin and Pica, we're told uh, in, in the first <coughs> verse of this particular chapter. And uh, God told Isaiah to go and talk to Ahaz. And in verse 3, uh, the Lord said unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz thou, and shear Jashub thy son at the end of the conduit of the highway of the upper pool. Now, Isaiah, of course, named his two children with particular names. Uh, and um, uh, I can't quite think of them at the moment, but they have great uh, pertinence for uh, this particular um, sit situation. But Ahaz uh, was told to ask the Lord for a sign. Uh, verse 10, Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign. Uh, the Lord thy God ask it in either in the depth or in the height thereof. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Uh, and then Isaiah was told to give Ahaz a sign. Uh, Therefore the Lord shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Now, of course, we take that right forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the prophecy of that. But it could just as well be a prophecy of the birth of Hezekiah himself, uh, because Hezekiah's mother at this particular time was indeed a virgin, according to our commentators. I'm not picking the commentators who write from outside, from, from our particular commentators. Um, and um, uh, although the city of Jerusalem and Jude, Judah were in, in, in fact uh, pressed by these two kings, um, as I was to give, a has a sign that eventually, because of one that was to come, then Judah would indeed be released from uh, this threat. So he says, therefore, behold, I shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And uh, uh, it, it seems to me that uh, Isaiah holding this child that had this particular name uh, that that was going to mean something, pointed to this young girl, this virgin, who was soon to become uh, the, the wife of um, uh, Ahaz, and uh, said, prophesied that uh, she would have a son, that she would conceive a son. So in, in a sense, Hezekiah was a child of promise, just as Isaac was and uh, uh, John the Baptist was and the Lord Jesus Christ was. Uh, and this child that uh, was going to be born at this particular time was going to have this tremendous influence <laughs> upon uh, the people of, uh, uh, of, of Judah. Um, so, when Hezekiah was born, uh, under the influence of his mother and under the influence of the prophet, it was perhaps the prophet that uh, expressed this uh, future and work that uh, Hezekiah uh, had to do. Now we're told in uh, Second of Chronicles, uh, the chapter that we read, chapter 29, that he was um, 25 years old when he began uh, to reign. And up to that 25 years of age, Hezekiah had been planning. All through those 25 years, with the influences of these good people around him, he had been planning. And what is it that he had been planning? Well, he had been planning that he wanted to bring back the true worship of Yahweh, the, the God of Israel, uh, Judah and Israel, and to reunite in some way the peoples of Judah and the peoples of Israel. To stop the, the, the infighting between the two nations, to stop the corruption that was going on in their worship, uh, and to reunite these two nations. So we could say, in, in a sense, then, um, if these influences weren't the sort of influences that we might have in our lives, not to such great work as, as, as Hezekiah, we could say, well, it was all of God. 
so it was destined anyway that uh, uh, Hezekiah would be the one to bring about this reformation. Just as in uh, the book of Jeremiah, uh, which, which we uh, read in the first chapter of the book of Jeremiah, don't we, that it was indeed God's work uh, that caused Jeremiah to, to become that great prophet that, uh, uh, that he was. Jeremiah chapter 1 and at verse uh, 5, uh, Jeremiah is told, Well, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And yet in a sense, um, that was the same with Hezekiah. It's the same with all of us, isn't it? We're, we're told in... Uh, the letter to the, the Ephesians, that we were all, we were all um, conceived in the mind of God before the creation of the world. Uh, so therefore, um, uh, what, what, whatever Hezekiah did, or whatever we do, or whatever Jeremiah did, um, then he had no free will, as it were, to do what he wanted to do. But we're not told that about Hezekiah. Um, so Hezekiah had to have his own input into these things. He had to have that, uh, that will to do uh, what uh, had been ordained for him to do. Not directly by God, but by these influences <laughs> that were uh, around him. He had to have his own input, as it were. Uh, and so we can ask the questions, well, where did Hezekiah worship? He could go into the temple because the temple had been shut up by his father. And in fact, it, the, the doors had been hammered closed. Uh, there was virtually nothing within the temple for the true worship of God, because Ahaz had taken it all away. Uh, he'd either sold it, he'd either melted it down, or he'd either cut it up. Uh, and so therefore, there was nothing there. So he, uh, he couldn't worship there. So where did he worship? Um, and worship in the temple, of course, was forbidden by, by Ahaz. Um, so, what was Hezekiah to do? Um, there hadn't been a, a reformation like this. We're told that there hadn't been uh, a Passover like this. But there must have been Passovers, individual Passovers, kept all the time. But there hadn't been a Passover kept like this since the time of Samuel, we're told. Uh, and so therefore, Sam, uh, Hezekiah had no experience of organising these events uh, on such a, a grand scale. So what was the first thing that Hezekiah did? What was the first thing that came into his mind? What was the first thing that Hezekiah planned? Well, the first thing that Hezekiah planned was to open up the temple and to bring about within the temple that true worship of God because the temple was the very centre of the worship of Judah and without the temple the people were lost uh, they had nowhere to go to worship on a, uh, on a communal scale uh, and so uh, Hezekiah opened up the temple he let the light in to the temple but most importantly, he let the light of the temple out so that the true worship and the glory uh, that God had uh, in, in the beginning within that temple could shine out and, uh, and become part of the worship of uh, Judah once again. Temple was uh, a place to unite the people. First thing that Hezekiah wanted to do was to unite the people of Judah and bring them back to the worship. But by the things that he did consequently, he also wanted to unite the nation of Judah and Israel and bring all of them back to the uh, worship of the, the, the true God. So in a very real sense, um, Hezekiah becomes a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and I worked out a list, and I won't read it to you, of 12 ways in which Hezekiah became a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. It might be a little exercise for us to, uh, uh, to think about that as we go uh, along. But 
Hezekiah started to reign at 25 years of age. And he actually died 29 years of age. So the Reformation didn't last very long, did it? And we've got to look to Andrew now for the, the next Reformation that came uh, into the land of Judah uh, and, and, and Israel. But however good a king Hezekiah was, life was never without its difficulties. And however good, brethren and sisters, we try to be in the service of our Lord and, and our God, life will never be without its difficulties. And we have to work through those difficulties. Um, just as the uh, recorded life of Hezekiah will show, he had to work through them. Uh, and when the book of life is open, and uh, the record of our life uh, is, is, is shown to those around us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps to our Lord will see some sort of reflection that we did indeed try our best to influence those around us to do the things and worship the true God and to influence our friends and our workmates and our schoolmates or wherever they, they might be or even our retired mates uh, that uh, we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and we are trying to the best of our ability to, to open to the whole world uh, the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh.